Hi, I'm Troy Nyman with Pursue the Outdoors. Welcome to another edition of PTO University. This one on elk calling. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite top tips for this upcoming elk season to help you better understand elk language and know which calls to use in order to get that big bull or that cow or whatever you're looking for to come in. First, let's talk about the type of calls real quick. I like to use calls that aren't common production calls that everybody's using in the field that all make the same sound. I try to make uh, calls sound different, different tones, louder in volume, quieter in volume. I really like to use diaphragm palate plate calls. I know some people gag and choke on them, but they really are an effective tool. They're designed with latex and they produce a similar sound to elk that have that thin membrane in their vocal cords. Um, I particularly like to use the bugling bull call um, diaphragm or the primos diaphragms. If you find they don't fit or seal, you can cut them with scissors, you can bend them, you can shape them and mold them, but they're a really effective call to use for cow calls, to go really soft, to do bugles, um, just really, and they're hands free most of all. So if you get that shot opportunity, you don't have to hold another call. Another call that I really like to use is kind of a homemade bugle. It's produced by Deep Timber Sounds. Um, once again, it's a latex call, so I can really control the volume. I can do different types of chuckles, um, a different rhythm, different speed. And then another one is the push calls. Even though a lot of people use these, if you put them under your armpit or you change direction or you muffle them, if used correctly, they imitate elk sounds very, very close. So let's talk about a couple of typical things I do as we get out there at the different times of the year, whether you're an archery hunter or whether you're a rifle hunter, calling can be effective all year long. It's really just understanding the language and being able to apply it in an effective way at the right time of the season. So I break up the early season in archery in three pieces. You basically have the territorial, kind of the pre-rut where bulls are pecking on each other. They're starting to break up. They're establishing territory. They're kind of being dominant in their canyon. And they use a lot of raking. They use a lot of uh, sounds. And I like to use an electronic call. You might want to check on this in your state. But uh, a lot of times when I get in the woods, before I start doing any calls at all in the early season, I'll use calls similar to this, which is a raking type sound. You can do this manually or electronic. Once I finish raking, kind of pounding the ground making elk sounds, not human sounds. But once I start to rake and I start to pull grass like an elk chewing on grass, maybe I'll go over and I'll rake a tree with a limb. These are all very casual, common elk sounds and it relaxes them, it makes them comfortable. After that, I'll introduce some slow cow calls. And a lot of times that can be done on a push call, either under the arm or out in the open. But the key is to push it effectively. If you push it too fast, you get a bark and that's a warning call and you don't want to do that. If you push it too slow, you don't complete the call. Okay, it's incomplete. The key is to just push it smooth all the way through. You can get uh, different sounds and it sounds like you're all over the place. Diaphragms also make a lot of different calls to simulate multiple cows and calves. The higher the pitch, more of a calf. The lower the pitch, more of an adult cow. Also, you can use bugle tubes to do that, and you can make cow calls. So you can mew, you can chirp, you can estrus. Now let's demonstrate a couple of these calls real quick, just so you understand which calls I'm talking about. The chirp is really simple. It's very short in duration. Loud, quiet, high, low, real short. The mew is more relaxed when they're feeding and they're more relaxed talking to each other. You can do that with an open read call. Okay. Then there's the estrus call, which is a little bit longer in wavelength. As they get more urgent or have some anxiety where they need to breed, on the estrus call it'll be more drawn out and it'll get more wavelength to it. Here's a typical estrus call. Okay, that can be very effective to get bulls to want to come right to you.
So let's talk a little bit about the bull sounds. A couple things to realize with bulls, is, and cows as well, is they make different types of barks. There's a really high pitch, sharp, alert, warning bark that puts the herd or other animals in the area on an alert status. There's another bark that's a little bit softer and it's more of a grunt that we call the show me grunt. So I'll demonstrate those two different sounds to you so you can understand what they sound like. Some of you may have heard this and it's kind of the dust and butts call because that's where you see them taken off. Okay, this is your alert warning bark. Okay, it's really sharp, it's high pitched, very aggressive. Sometimes you may be doing some elk sounds, pulling grass, raking a tree, you might be soft mewing or cow talking, and off in the distance as an animal circling you on the wind to try to identify that you're really an elk, you may hear a grunt which is soft and low and it's more of a show me grunt. Okay, if you hear that, a lot of times that's an elk communicating with you to show yourself. You can use these calls at different times also to get their attention if you've been moving or maybe you've busted a herd. You can throw a show me grunt, sometimes it'll stop them and it may bring them right back to you. Let's talk a little bit about bugling. Bugling can be really effective in the early season to locate bulls, especially at sunrise and most of all at sunset. During the day, usually during the noon to three o'clock hour after they may have been down bedded for two, three hours, they're ready to get up and go to water. So sometimes midday bugling locating can be really effective. So let's talk about different bugles to use. One of the bugles that I like to use all throughout the season, whether you're archery or rifle, is the locate bugle. It's really smooth. It can have one, two, or three notes. It usually hits a real high note. It holds for quite a while, and it doesn't have a lot of aggression to it. And a lot of times bulls like to respond right back to that. And I'll show you what a locate bugle is like. Okay, so it has a little bit of growl, nice long range with a couple notes, and a real soft push out to it. Doesn't have a lot of aggression to it. Now another bugle that you may encounter if you're wearing scent, or you're acting as cows and you're doing a lot of mewing and chirping, introducing some estrus, you may get a screen bugle where a bull may be checking in to find out if there's another bull in the area and it'll be real aggressive. Okay, it has a lot of push and a lot of scream. So it's just as we say, it's a scream bugle. Now another bugle you may hear quite often is when bulls are in a herd and they've harremed and they've got cows and it's a full growl with a lot of mid-range and then it climbs up and pushes out. So it's kind of the full bugle. Okay, and that's kind of a strutting, posturing bugle. So last but not least, let's talk about a, uh, another bugle that oftentimes herd bulls or smaller bulls that are trying to act big and macho like to do is called the lip ball. Kind of a herding bugle and it has a lot to do with cows and harrowing. And you can produce that with a diaphragm or a call that uses latex, but you have to sputter your lips and use any type of tube that you like. And it often sounds a lot like this, and maybe you've heard it. it sounds a lot like an adult, large bull cattle cow. Okay, so the four different types of bugles, the locate bugle, the scream bugle, the display bugle, and the herding bugle, or the lip ball bugle. It's important when you're out in the elk woods listening to elk to really listen to their aggression to find out if they're more relaxed or are they really angry, are they violent, or are they dealing with cows and in the breeding harming period. So let's apply some of this stuff. Now a lot of times with the bugles you hear the chuckles. One of the key things that I want to talk about real quick as a tip with the chuckles is understanding the rhythm. Sun chuckles are really fast and high pitched. Other chuckles are really deep and pleading. Think of it as the fast chuckle is aggressive, bull-to-bull -bull aggression for a fight or for territory, and the slow, deep, bouncing chuckle is more cow calling. It's a big bull usually calling to cows or pleading with cows. So I'll demonstrate the territorial fast chuckle. Okay, sometimes you may hear that and it's very aggressive. The other chuckle is that deep, pleading chuckle for cows. Okay, so you really got to key in and listen to the speed of the chuckle, the aggression to the bugle. Is it a bull checking in with you to see if there's another bull in the area? 
think about it. Does a bull want to go to a date for the breeding season or does a bull want to go to the fight for territory? Usually the fighting aggression is in the early season over dominance and territory and it moves more into the pleading cow gathering and breeding as you go later into late September, October, and November. So that just kind of gives you a quick overview of calls, the different types of calls and calling techniques. So I wish you luck this season and uh, let us know at Pursue the Outdoors how you do. Good luck in the Elkwoods.